put the hammer down, the hammer comes in and it's like, it literally goes, Meh. Now I gotta ride or die. Lovely. Guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you are okay with being there today. It gives um, a grander perspective as to how large this car is. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're enjoying your day. I know I am. Pop my seatbelt on so the bonging goes off. Now, first impressions of my Dodge Ram because I have owned this car and enjoyed it daily for the last two weeks so i've come to terms with it what it's like to drive its perks and why i really wanted one of these I want to give over my initial impressions of owning this thing because it's a little bit different it isn't your mundane normal car I, i've got some things to tell you about this it's, it's the sickest thing ever it really is anyway firstly let's navigate out of a car park because that's always fun now this has got reversing camera and reversing parking sensors that come in so we out of here in just a second just there very very easy actually to get this thing backed into a space and turned round just like so out of the car park onwards to the road because my initial impressions of this car are very very high first if you have not already watched the video of me buying this thing this is my 2012 Dodge Ram 1500 now it has the 5.7 liter petrol Hemi V8 engine up front they produce like 390 horsepower I know that's not a lot out of a 5 liter I get it but my initial impression of that engine is that not only is it incredibly easy to service, it's very, very cheap to service this engine, actually. It has two spark plugs per cylinder, and that put a bit of fear into my head. You guys may have seen the video of me uh, getting the service stuff for this. It was actually 90p a spark plug, 90p. So the actual cost of servicing this thing in parts was just... 65 pounds i think it was with the oil very very cheap indeed now the truck is nice and warm let me give it a little squirt for you guys because some of you need to know what this thing sounds like although saying that this thing is so refined and relatively quiet in here for what it is do a bit of an overtake <laughs> motorway speeds that's it it's not fast it's not insanely quick but it has so much get up and go this thing is it's actually insane when you cruise it's like this it chills and then when you want to put the hammer down the hammer comes in and it's like it literally goes <laughs> that is just like the coolest thing ever because it chills it's a chill car it enjoys just poodling around and so do i when i'm doing like daily duties and stuff we're not shooting stuff for the channel all the time and now we're at a set of traffic lights it's just lovely in it it's absolutely beautiful what i will do though is put my heated seats on it does have cooling seats but it's a bit too cold today i'll put the heated steering wheel on now let me talk to you about the heated steering wheel i wanted a heated steering wheel in a car for so long i know it's such a silly thing to want in a daily driver but i've never had it i've never bought a car with a heated steering wheel this it's hot to the touch already it literally takes 15 seconds and it's warm if you leave it on for a very long period of time yes in the mornings it's lovely it gets so hot it's it's so nice but i've never had a car i've driven a lot of cars with heated steering wheels but i've never had a car that one gets hot that quick 
and gets hot for long, if that makes any sense. Now, I will delve into the petrol bills and the, oh, it's a five litre truck and it's left-hand drive. I'll do a separate video on that because there's so many people out there asking what it's actually like to own this thing. But first impressions go, it isn't as bad as you think it's gonna be. That's what I'm gonna say now. I will, in a week or so, do an actual petrol price breakdown between this and my RS3. And you'll be very, very surprised at the outcome. I am personally surprised at how well this is on fuel, considering what it is. Don't get me wrong, you're not doing 50 MPG, but it's a lot more cost effective than you would expect. But as first impressions go, apart from the heated steering wheel being probably one of the best things ever invented, it is luxurious in here, it's comfortable, it's quiet, it's massive, but I love big cars. I've owned a fair few big cars in my time. Nothing this large on a daily basis, don't get me wrong, but it hasn't put fear into me. It hasn't scared me at all. It's never come stuck between me going through, you know, a couple of parked cars, you know, going down back streets, getting to where I need to for various shoots. Not once have I been worried about reversing this into a parking space. Another thing that I think a lot of people would fear about owning something like this, personally, again, I've owned American cars. I've enjoyed them. Never to this amount of time on this scale. So daily driving a left-hand drive car, but again, we'll, we'll go into another video on that. But what I will say is once you're in it, and you know, I flip from car to car a lot. I go from, you know, left-hand drive, right-hand drive, small, big, and not once have I got in this thing and feared trying to get out of somewhere. Not once have I feared thinking I'm in a small car and it's right-hand drive, I've got to drive my left-hand drive big truck home. Never been a real concern for me. But I think if you're a competent driver and you, you can reassure yourself that you know what you're doing, you're on to a winner. But inside, what's it like inside? Now, a lot of people would think that American cars especially aren't that nice inside. This is very, very luxurious inside. So we have these huge seats. I mean, they are absolutely massive, comfortable. They're fully electric down here. And in fact, this has got electric pedals. So if you were a little bit shorter in the leg, you can actually bring the pedals towards you if so needs B. It has everything on the steering wheel, cruise control, your phone. You can go through all of the menus in the digital display in front of you. This one actually has an Alpine sound system. Now, I'm trying not to review this, but the Alpine sound system, when your phone is connected, is epic. It's got speakers up here and down there. It's got subs under the rear seats from the factory. This is not an aftermarket sound system. This is factory subwoofers in the back of this pickup truck. Now you say pickup truck like it's an agricultural machine. America though, I feel this is like the Mondeo or at least the normal version of a car that you would go and buy. This isn't out of the norm there. And that reflects in the build quality and the refinement inside because this is one car that does it all for some people. This is a luxurious cruiser and over the last sort of couple of weeks I've owned this thing, I don't know why you would want anything else. I genuinely am so happy I talked myself into finally pulling the trigger on one of these. Literally after having it for one week, well two weeks now, I am just like sold on the idea of this thing. Luxury is finest. I have literally at the moment, we've got the whole of the 106 in the back and you wouldn't even know that that is in the back of this truck right now. You would not expect such refinement and such luxury from a pickup truck. Again, I've driven pickup trucks. I've driven a brand new Ranger. I've driven, you know, Toyotas, Hilux, whatever. None of them have been anywhere near as drivable as this is, as comfortable going down the road, as luxurious. And as my first impressions go, I, I genuinely, although I only keep cars like this for a year, and I hope you guys understand that because we're going to move into something else, you know, towards the start of next year, maybe the end of this. I'm so glad I took the plunge into getting one of these. I haven't got the fear like I used to have getting into something like this because I've proved to myself now that this is just everything you could ever want in a car. It really is. As you can see, we've got the baby seat in here. We did have the other seat that side. We've been out on family walks and, you know, I've taken loads of stuff in the bed already just in the last two weeks. And I tell you, it's it's just everything you could ever want in this truck. It really, really is. So first impressions are very, very high. After servicing it, it's not a lot of money. After running it, it's not a lot of money. It really isn't for what you get. Insurance is really cheap. I 
think it's around, I would say percentage right, it's around 40, maybe 50% cheaper than my RS3 to insure. I know, right? That's a huge saving. And parts are really easy to get. You can get parts on Rock Auto for very, very cheap, and they'll get here literally within three days. So first impressions are really, really high. I hope you guys understand why I made this video, just to show my impressions, because I've had it for two weeks now, I've enjoyed it, I've gone and done, you know, we've done about oh, eight or nine car shoots and I've driven there, I've driven to people's houses, I've parked it down lanes, down back roads and yeah, I am sold on the idea of this thing but make sure you give me a comment below, let me know your thoughts on my Dodge Ram 1500 and we will do a what's it like to drive a left hand drive in the UK as a daily driver very very soon and we will also do a cost rundown of this thing versus a hot hatch, you'll be very very surprised. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did like this style of video please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't see you all on the next one